Go to bed slightly hungry every night. And if you can do that, you'll be at a caloric deficit. And that's the main way, or I mean, that is the only way to lose weight is to be at a caloric deficit. So if you just have a little bit of hunger every night, you'll wake up a little bit skinnier. Hi, I'm Andre Chandra, founder and CEO of Propella Media. Leaders rise up in challenging times. In today's Ask an Expert series, we're visited by Nate Pearson, CEO of Trainer Road, a firm that develops a science-based planning, training, and analysis tools to increase a cyclist's performance. We're going to be talking about how working out from home has now become a necessity under this new normal and how to transition into this new routine as seamlessly as possible. Let's hear it from him. All right, uh, Nate Pearson, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm well, I'm well, thank you. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit more about you and your business there? Yeah, so our company's called Trina Road and we make cyclists faster. We do that through structured workouts and training plans that people execute on a, a bike on a trainer back there. And they do a fitness test and based on the results of that test, we give them structured training plans geared to what type of cyclist they are. All right. And now with, with something that's very relevant today, uh, can you share how uh, COVID has impacted you, um, maybe personally and also your business? Yeah, so for business operations, we uh, about half our company is remote and we have about 86 people. So the switch to remote for everyone has been very easy. Um, I'm in the office right now, but I'm the only one here. So that's also pretty nice. Um, and then for, we're at home fitness, right? And that's really hot right now. So we've actually seen an increase in signups but also an increase in, in cancellations, but overall we're up. Um, but I think the increase, <clears throat> excuse me, the increase year, in year, year over year in cancellations just because the unemployment rate in America is like 15, 20%. And we're also a global brand with 60% of our sales international. So um, there'll probably be a long-term uh, decrease uh, in net year over year growth, I'm guessing over the next year or two, depending on how fast we bounce back. Got it. Got it. Now, uh, working out from home, you know, looks like we, we can be in for a long ride here. Um, what, what trends have you seen and what advice can you give to those who want to um, maintain tip top physical shape in the midst of all these big changes? Yeah. Uh, so for physical shape, it's all about consistency is doing a lot or doing a little all the time rather than these big days and having a crash down where you don't work out at all after that. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you need to do it first thing in the morning. If that's not you, don't do that. Do whatever in your day feels best and then have that. Don't push to that kind of 4 or 5 a.m. kind of classic entrepreneur thing of like I work out in the morning. I personally like working out at 3.30 or 4 o'clock. I find that my brain is tired, but my body is not tired yet. So that's what works best for me. And then just try to be consistent the whole time. Um, eat to hunger. And then the number one tip I have for if you want to lose weight during this time is other than you know eat whole foods and all that stuff that you've heard, but is go to bed slightly hungry every night. And if you can do that, you'll be at a caloric deficit. And that's the main way, or, I mean, that is the only way to lose weight is to be at a caloric deficit. So if you just have a little bit of hunger every night, you'll wake up a little bit skinnier. What have you seen or observed from those who are so used to working out in a gym or in a group setting now that they have to do it from home or by themselves? Yeah, there's like a, a, a yearning for connection right now. And uh, our team, when this hit, they did a really good job. We had like an alpha that we built back in the fall, but they did a, a group video workout. So kind of like a Zoom call, except everyone shares their, uh, their, their power and their data and they're doing a workout together and it's structured for each person, individual workouts. And that's been very popular with Trainer Road is um, because a lot of people, they still want that group experience. So I think what, what we're seeing is people at home if they don't have something like that, then they're doing Zoom calls or FaceTime where they're kind of working out as a group um, to try to replicate that experience of being at the gym. Got it, got it. Now, business-wise, you, you uh, shared earlier that you have transitioned your team to work virtually and that's an, an easier uh, transition. What other big decisions have you made uh, business-wise since the outbreak? Um, one was launching the group workouts. That was a big or a fast pivot for us. Um, the, the main thing that we're doing, because especially early on, there's a lot of uncertainty about how deep we're going to go. And I think there still is with the economy is one to be very um, forthcoming with your employees about 
what is your cash runway, what happens in different scenarios, how much can you shrink and still be okay, um, all of those things. And then also I'm a big change that I'm doing, which I think I'm gonna do forever because it's worked so well, is I do a daily update of maybe two to five minutes of like a, me recording me speaking, where I go over metrics, sales metrics, and also stuff coming down that's happened in the company every single day and then project out that. So as we're getting closer to our goals, that, that's, that's let us get to a point where um, we're so big, or we're not really that big, but we're big enough where no one can understand everything that's going on. And I can get a summarized version of like the state of the company where everyone mm -hmm. can digest it very quickly. And we put that in Slack and then people thumbs up when they, uh, thumbs up reaction when they read it and or when they watch it. And then they can also comment on that if we wanna have a discussion off of that. But that kind of, that's, I've had that, I've seen that that's made communication a lot better in the company. And I wish I would have started it like five years ago. I see. Yeah. So you want to project transparency and also calm to the rest of the team that everything's, everything's okay. Here are the numbers. You can, you can look at them and contact me if you, if you want to discuss more. So sounds yeah. like a well, great strategy there. Not even just contact me, but just message right there on the thread so everyone can see it. It's, it's really important, I think, to, um, to like lead and that sounds kind of obvious but uh with the more uncertainty the more your employees are going to look to to someone to say hey where's this ship going what are we doing to uh respond to to all these things and and we're doing these things and we're moving we're very data driven so we're running experiments to try to change cancellations or increase signups and, or you know increase usage and having that constant uh message and everyone hears it, I think really helps with morale and motivation um, to like go through this time. So like the team is, the team's been so great is they feel like a team and like they're working together to beat an enemy that's COVID rather than like COVID is attacking us and we're weak and we can't control it. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Now uh, in terms of post COVID, comeback strategies, you know, uh, what signals are you looking for in your particular industry? And what do you plan to do first once you see that signal? Uh, so there's a few things internal and external. Internally, I've told everyone that they don't need to come back to work anytime soon. So as we, we're in Nevada, and as that opens up, um, I think everyone wants to stay home a little bit longer, because we don't, we're not, you know, we can work virtually. So employees appreciate that. And we'll probably have more work from home at the end of this. Um, and then for us, I expect we have a little bit of seasonality in our business where in the summer people want to go outside or do group rides. And I suspect as things open up, the, the, the reaction to wanting to ride outside will be stronger than other years. But then as they come into the winter again, it will still be strong because this is a good, a lot of people are finding out about us um, this year. But for instance, SEO searches, I just saw the data for all of our market or all of our, um, our properties are up 438% year over year. So I think that kind of stuff will actually, will come out as a relatively stronger company. Really, we're really lucky too, that we're a, you know, at home fitness in this time. Um, so coming out, I'm not sure what the growth rate's going to be, but, uh, just I, I'm planning for, uh, probably I'm not optimistic, right? I'm planning for bad. So then if good happens, we have a good cash runway and everything's awesome. Right. You want to be conservative. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share that I haven't asked already? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate you uh, coming in and, you know, jumping in for this quick interview. Um, uh, again, good luck to you and, and all the best uh, to you and Trainer Road. Hopefully we get out of this, um, you and all other companies unscathed. Thank you, Andre. All right, thanks.